Cool. Uh, cool. Hey, hi, uh, hello, <laughs> welcome to Ron Coco Cast number four, I think. Uh, running uh, pretty red hot here, you know, four, four on the trot. Uh, today's going to be a pretty cool one. Uh, I've got the young Cooper here, uh, worked with him uh, back in Big White. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, he's got a pretty cool story. Uh, he definitely is a... Uh, yeah, definitely a bit of a different character when it comes to someone <laughs> of his age, I can tell you that much. Before. There's not many people that have done what Cooper has done, which I think would be a great insight uh, for this channel. Obviously, snow related again, uh, with the whole idea of moving over uh, at a younger age than what most people would normally do. Uh, and I'm just going to dive in onto the benefits of what I think... Pick is, my brain. Yeah, pick his brain on why he think, well, why I think it's great that he's done it at his age rather than... My age. Well, I'm not saying that when I did it was bad, but I'm saying that... What age oh, did you start? Uh, so we, we moved over when I was 23, 22, 23, 23. So 23. 23. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, so where Cooper uh, did his first season at the age of... 18. 18, so straight out of <laughs> high school. Uh, no apprenticeship, no university. Just a gap year. Just a gap year that has turned into... Three years now. <laughs> yeah, three years counting. now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And I just think that, you know, that, you, well, first of all, let's hear your story. So where did you, what have you done? Uh, so so much, straight out of school. So straight out of school, I graduated and then went straight to Threadbow for my first season and worked as a lifty. Yep. And then as soon as I finished that, I went home and worked for a little bit. So then I went home for like three months or so. And yep. then pretty much as soon as I got home for my first season, I was like, I definitely want to do another one. And like, I wanted to go snowboarding straight away. Yeah. I didn't really want to wait another year to do another season in Australia. Yeah. And it's like one of my good mates from back home that like me and him just got on so well, just about snowboarding pretty much. Yeah. We we're like, let's go to, let's go to Canada, do, do, do a season. And then it's pretty much like, we didn't really have any idea of what ski resort we wanted to go to. And then like pretty much Whistler is like, the main resort everyone thinks of. Top, go, top dog, yeah. Hey. when we go to Canada. So, like, that's where we went. Yeah. And then that was awesome. And then went home for a little bit and then just finished the season in Big White, working yep. in rental shop. Now he's, yeah, uh, now he's back in Whisper the Summer with your boy. <laughs> should be good, should be good. Uh, so, like, a couple of things I want to do dive into, and that is purely why didn't you do the norm of going to university or jumping into an apprenticeship, which is expected from most kids your age. Yeah, um, I'm not too sure really. I think like a little, pretty much like, yeah, 90% of the cohort when like we graduated pretty much, like they all like went straight into uni and straight yeah. into a trade. And I was like, I just finished 12 years of schooling. Like even yeah. though I didn't really do much for my five years. I yeah. just sat around playing computer games. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I like, I want to like celebrate and have a year off or something like that. And like, yeah. I love snowboarding. Like I've been, I've been to like, Japan, New Zealand, like I've tried to go like once a year for like since I was in grade eight. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, I want to go do a season. And then like Threadbow was like the first, like I applied for a couple places and Threadbow was the first place I heard back from. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, loved it from going from there. That's good shit. See, because what I think is really good about what you've done and why I think that uh, going to university or getting a trade straight out of high school is the worst possible thing for someone at the age of 18 to do. Mm. Purely because I think that is such a huge decision for an 18 year old to make. Yeah. And like, regardless, like, you don't have any university debt. You have no <laughs> fucking no university debt. But do you know what you're building for yourself right now? You're building character and you're like, you're working in so many different fields to understand what you actually really want to do. Yeah. Because I went out of, like, straight out of high school, I went to university. I now have a university debt for fucking some stupid <laughs> degree that stack on here. Yeah, that I didn't even finish. I, I did walk out with a diploma, but like I don't even work in that field. Yeah. And then I got an apprenticeship. So I, I like hit one wall, then hit the next wall, and then I was like, and then I sat in my apprenticeship for four years going, why the fuck am I doing this when I don't yeah. like it? And like the money bug gets you. Yeah, right? that's what I was sort of stressed about. I think like doing my like when I went and did my first season, I was sort of a little bit worried because like all my friends and stuff like that were all going to uni and they were all doing a trade yeah and they pretty much like i didn't like i regretted a little bit but i was still having fun mm. and then pretty much when i came back from whistler like half my friends that went to high school or went not went to high school went to university or got a trade yeah all dropped out and we we're all just working shitty jobs and they're like we wish we did what you were doing yeah and then that's and why like, yeah. yeah i honestly think what you're doing right now is the best in my person like my personal opinion i think it's the best thing for you to do oh, i'd absolutely recommend it if i yeah. have kids for sure like the whole gap year thing i reckon it's great and then like gap year to three years <laughs> fucking who cares Go for doing it? yeah because i might like so you're pretty much the same age as both my younger brothers 
Uh, and what you have is something that I don't think, but no offence to Riley or Quinn if they do watch this, but I hope they do. Um, but you've lived out at home at the age of 18. Uh, did, did you have, was your mum at Throbo making your lunches? Nah, did I didn't, didn't think so. Was, uh, was she there doing your washing? Had to learn that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Was she uh, there doing your tax return? Was she doing like I think that you're building like at such a young age, it's such great experience to just have on your shoulders and like because you're gonna like so what, you're you're 20 now, right? Like, yeah, just turn 20. Yes, yeah, turn 20. So you're gonna be going. So your visa ends out. Your visa runs out November yeah. this year. So I'll go home and right from 21. Yeah. And see, the best thing about, for you, like, the best thing for you is, and I'm not sure if you know about this, but obviously, the like... Mature age for apprenticeships yeah, and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, mature age for apprenticeships. Man, fucking man, I, I wish I knew about this. Worked out perfect. Yeah, so, I don't know if, if you guys don't know, so there's, like, a mature apprenticeship wage. So, pretty much, Cooper's going to get paid more as a first-year apprentice than a 16-year-old first-year apprentice purely because of his age. I think this is a huge, yeah. huge loophole that no one's exploiting. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. Yeah, it's like... It works out perfect for me, though, I guess. Yeah, 100%. And like, this is why I think more people should do what you've done versus what I've done mm. and then what a lot of other people do. Uh, don't get me wrong, I did come here and I am now obviously in a licensed licensed electrician yeah, at the you age got something of, under your belt. Yeah, you I was, yeah, back I was licensed at the age of 21 or 22, 3, 23, <laughs> 23. <laughs> I fucking don't remember. It was such honestly my apprenticeship, as much as I love the company that I work for, aka because I work with my old man, yeah, great yeah. bloke. But like, man, I just there's something about it, like doing something that is purely money driven and it like it literally only gets you something. It's like how much were you on like for your first year as an apprentice? Like 13, 14 uh, bucks? No, I was I was looked after because I was the <laughs> boss's son, but they definitely they definitely the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there definitely there definitely was uh, you know, first year apprentices that were on quite lower wages and it's just real shit kickers. Yeah, but it's it's just I just think that you're gonna be in such a better position and then obviously because you've had these neck like these two years to experience or three years of experiencing different types of fields of work. Yeah. It just sort of really matures you as a person. I think that's the one big thing. Uh, my younger brother, my youngest brother, <laughs> Quinn, I don't, I don't mean to be this bagging out my fucking real, like my siblings, <laughs> but like, fair, fair. this is like, this is me from Canada, and if they're watching it, like, fucking put your head in, <laughs> all right? But like, you literally, you, you're literally building so much great life skills doing this at such a young age, and it really like, because you can't come over here and be in, like you can't you can't be an eighteen year old over here. Yeah. Because like no one's yourself. unless your parents are literally feeding you money, which obviously they won't for you. They like, at least they're feeding you credit cards and all this other shit. You've got to it, it's you it's you and your fucking own two feet. That's it. You gotta yeah. You gotta have a job and like staff accommodation, like working for the yeah. resort. Like you gotta work forty hours a week to have a place to live. And yeah, stuff man. Like that. It's, it's definitely yeah. It makes you grow up a little bit quicker. Yeah, definitely, sure. man. Definitely. You like. I, honestly, Coop, like you're you're a good kid. As much oh, as I, cheers, as much mate. as we bagged you out, <laughs> as much as we bagged yeah, you out, you're, you're nothing good. better than getting chirped in the rental shop at Biggie. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, yeah, big time. Nothing nothing better than getting chirped. <laughs> so, what, what what are your plans then? What are your plans? What do you have in mind for yourself when you get home then? Um, I'm not too sure yet. I'll sort of like apparently I've been told. Because I think you may be able to get a three month extension on your work visa. Like, have you had oh, any? Damn. Time? No, I've have not. It was something like, I'm not too sure how it works. So apparently, if you're applying to BPR, they give you a 90 day extension. So Actually, isn't that what Ash just got? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's something, okay. yeah, it's something like that. So I was thinking about maybe I could fake applying for a PR and get the extra 30 day, 90 days or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I could stay for like maybe like half of the winter. Fuck, like that's not a bad idea, man. And then pretty much like I'd, if it works out, like I'd get home in February, like two months before I turn 21. Yeah. And I can just get a trade and stuff like that. Or like I'm definitely considering like getting like electrician's apprenticeship or something like that. Definitely a great trade. Yeah. Uh, I, as much, I, out of all the trades, I definitely think it is the, not the easiest, but like, it's very, very balanced when it comes to physical demands yeah. and mental demands. There's, oh, a lot, there's a lot more thinking involved. There's a lot like where physical is, if you want to like be a bricklayer or some yeah, shit. Yeah, a roof sheeter in North yeah. Queensland is shit house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, no, not a good time. Not at all. Yeah, damn, that three month extension would be pretty good, hey, yeah, because so like, this is another, okay, actually, this is completely off topic, but from the topics out of my hand, but I'll pick your brains on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously there's this big issue with obviously now that Australia can only have one uh, two year visa. Yeah. And then a lot of people are pushing for permanent residency. 
But um, my personal like thoughts on this and what I like, I, I I just don't think that I would want to do more than three seasons. Yeah, I oh. think that like one more season would just tick the box for me, and I'd be three, I'd be and happy. Be done deal. Yeah. I was like, I sort of, like, I can see why people hate that idea where they have to go home after two years. Yeah. But for me, I think, like, two years is enough. And, like, I think it's good that, like, I have to leave the country after two years. Because, like, yeah. if I could get one until I'm 30, yeah. I'll just keep renewing and I'll stay here. And well, I that's what, really like, so many people have done before us. Yeah. Like, uh, you remember that Ben guy? Yeah, yeah, He, he yeah, was, yeah. like, on, like, his... keep renewing it. Yeah, he was just, like, on his Every sixth years. visa. I was like, dude, like, fuck. I, guess, like, I, I think it will change eventually, but, like, I'm yeah. happy to... Go home after yeah. two two seasons and yeah. do something really. Wouldn't yeah. want to sneak in just a third little one. Not really, because I was like, so thinking about it. Like, I'd love to go home, like do a trade, or like I'm not too yeah. sure what I want to do. Get like do four years and then get something under my belt that I can pull back on. Yeah. And if I really want to do seasons after that, I can just keep doing it. Yeah, honestly, dude, I think for you going home, you're like if you obviously pass all your exams, you're gonna be a licensed spark at the age of 25. Mm. Which is fucking perfect. I honestly yeah. think that is so fucking well, well, really well played, mate. Yeah. I, I know oh. you. I know. You, I know you haven't really thought it out too too much, but nah, you played. Like you've year played. Year you've played this. You played this game called life quite well, my friend. Oh, I try my best. But how was your first season at Threadbow? You know, straight out of uh, straight out of school, straight living out of home. How did you? How did I you deal with it? It was like it was definitely a good time. I think like compared to the Canadian seasons, like. I mean, like, like Canada resorts, like, they're just a level above. Like, yeah. the resorts are so much better. And, like, Threadbow was fun to a certain extent, but, like, I guess, like, it, that definitely was a harder season for me. Yeah. I think because I was 18, like, literally, like, moving out of home for the first time and, like, yeah. working, like, a full-time job straight away. Yeah. And, like, just doing all, everything by myself was, like, a lot diff- like a lot more difficult. That's a big fucking step, dude. Yeah. And That's like, a yeah, huge, taking, that is a huge Taking step. that all along was, like, yeah, pretty stressful, but, like, it was fine. And then, like, I made a, a lot of good mates. But I think as well, like going to Canada and like I went with two really good friends from yeah. back home. Yeah. Like having like two really familiar faces. Like, definitely, like, definitely overseas, helps, yeah. like is just yeah. like made it so much easier. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Honestly, like even at my age, like if I was to do this on my own, I think I'd definitely struggle. Yeah. I'm fucking so glad that I have Steph by my side. It definitely makes just like expenses just so yeah. much easier if there's someone that you can share them with. Yeah, exactly. So, just, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think if you are going to do the whole finishing school at the age of 18 and going to enjoy life, try to drag a friend with you. Uh, that yeah, absolutely. Think, yeah, yeah, it definitely helps having like a friend uh, share the experiences with you, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and then what? So, straight from Threadbow, straight to Whistler. So, you were here. So, you weren't 18 when you were here, were you? I mean, so no, you weren't 19. Was, no, you weren't yeah, 19. I was... 18 for the majority of the season in Whistler, so I couldn't go out or drink or anything like that. Yeah. So I turned 19 pretty much a month, like four weeks before I went home, so I had a month of going out. Which is too bad, but like I had two very different seasons compared to Whistler. Yeah, damn. Compared to Big White. Because like, that's like, well, it's one thing to move out of home at the age of 18 and go work full time. It's another thing to move to another country at the age of 18. Overseas, yeah. Damn, man. Like, was that, so this is like purely because you and your best mate did it though. Yeah, it's just like yeah, me, Bailey, and Hope. Would you so. think? Would you think you would have done it if he didn't want to do it? Would oh, you have done this? I on your own? mentioned it to him. Like, I got home from Thurbo and I was like, I want to go do a season in Canada. Yeah. And like Bailey was like, Bailey and Hope were like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, like I didn't really put too much thought into it, and like Bailey just picked the resorts and stuff like that. He yeah. Showed me him, and I was like, yeah, he said Whistler is like the top, yeah. top dog, and I was like, yeah, sweet. Definitely. But, yeah, that was a big step, but like. I don't know, it was just like, I had very two different seasons, like, Whistler was like, couldn't go out or do anything really, so I was just sitting home playing video games, and then I got to go riding, like, all the time, so I got, like, 100 and, like, something days in my past, which was, like, sick, which is, like, what I wanted to do, come to Canada. Yeah. But then, like, yeah, Biggie was... So it might not even be, it might not even be a bad thing to come here at the age of 18, if you are purely looking to just ride. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like I was never hungover, so like, every day I had off, I was like always up on the mountain. Yeah, which is sick, which I love. Yeah, which is, like, which is the whole like, idea. Of, you know, idea of me being here. Yeah, that's hundred mm. percent. But then obviously you turned nineteen, and then just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit went downhill pretty quick. Yeah, big while was a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. uh, just for a little side note, the amount of mornings he'd come in <laughs> to work on a Saturday, and he wouldn't even know what his fucking <laughs> name was. <laughs> you just look at him like, oh, Cooper. <laughs> Yeah. Lights are on, but no one's home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big time, <laughs> big fucking time. Yeah. Well, man. Uh, yeah. I honestly like. Yeah. I reckon what you've done 
my my personal oh. my personal view is that you're you are on the correct way to enjoying your fucking yeah. years as a fucking teen, man. Yeah, that's what I mean. Just like after coming home from Whistle and like seeing all my mates that have just dropped out of uni, dropped out of trade, just doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. And like they wanted to do a season with us like when I graduated high school, but their parents forced them into doing it. Yeah. Like, so that's what it is, man. I'm, going. I'm telling you, dude, it's fucking out. The generation above us is the reason why. Just like for, forcing you into like getting a stable job so you yeah. can support yourself. It's, it's just it's it's just not the way that fucking life works anymore. Like people are continuing, like the retirement age is increasing. So like, there's no point in fucking jumping straight into it at the moment. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, like, I definitely I, think it's a good idea <laughs> traveling while you're young. You got no responsibilities. Oh man, I backpack. So both both my brothers are in a trade. Uh, one of them is, is your age. Uh, he's about to be, he's doing his builders uh, builders degree. Um, and like, you know what? Credit to him. Loves being a chippy. Fucking loves yeah, it. Yeah, live and breathe it. And yeah, do it. he fucking loves it. He plays rugby. He loves the whole. His lifestyle. He loves it all. Um, <laughs> Quinn as well. My youngest brother. He's a smart. He's a smart cookie, right? He's a very smart cookie, and this is why it <laughs> fucking annoys the shit out of me. <laughs> because I watched him follow my footsteps, and as much as I was at the end of the tunnel of like just finishing my apprenticeship and being a licensed electrician. And him wanting to start an apprenticeship because it's the easy alternative. Yeah. And like, obviously, because like my old man owns a company, it's very easy to like work. start, like get into yeah, that. Yeah, it's fun. You don't have to. Yeah, it's so easy. And I was like, I was, I was telling him, man, I was like, dude, I'm like, because he was working Saturdays here and there, uh, whenever we could <coughs> fit him on site, he'd jump on. And I was like, dude, you are so young, like to save this money. Turn 18 and just go see the world. Yeah. Just go do it. I think it's honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't be more passionate about yeah. that. I can honestly think that is the best way to go about it. But then I've like had a few mates who have like, start like finished their apprenticeships and like they, their plan was to finish high, high school, do an apprenticeship or do a uni and then start traveling after that. So yeah. they got something to fall back on. But it was like each to their own, I guess. Like, yeah, I, I honestly, you see, I went that, I went that route and like, yes, I've got something to fall back on, but majority of the time, you fucking don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, exactly. Like, I've done my five years and I was like, fuck me, I don't want to be a spark anymore. <laughs> I just don't, like, don't get me wrong, like, if I get robbed tomorrow and some kind oh, of yeah, steals like... every single dollar out of my account, it's nice to know that I can have that, but there's so many other jobs you can do that are going to get, going to get your money. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, like, and like, so you, so like, so obviously none of your mates have finished their apprenticeship yet, right? They're all mm. still kicking on. No, like second yeah. or third year. Yeah, see, so my only issue with that is, right, you spend... Your four years or your five years, if you fucking pass quick enough, uh, doing your apprenticeship, you find a girlfriend, that girlfriend turns into something else, yeah. you have a big night yeah. with the boys, you come home, throw one down the drain, next thing you know you're a dad, <laughs> and then you're stuck. You know yeah, what I mean? Set, yeah, you settle down. <laughs> and then like, you know, it's buying a house, and then That's it's it. like, and then, and then like, I have friends who are like, you know, Fucking yeah, mortgages, fucking yeah, kids on the way. That, you're gonna spend the next thing like you know, that. you're spending eighty grand on a fucking <laughs> wedding for like a day for her. And it's like eighty grand on one day and it's just like what are you fucking doing, man? Yeah, I This is a whole nother topic I could dive into. I fucking hate the idea of weddings. I think they're stupid. Yeah, fair. Yeah, dude, I think that's What so is dumb. Steph's opinion on it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no comment. We have we're, we're working around uh, like <laughs> where we can meet halfway on it. I feel it. I just don't like the idea of someone spending three grand on a piece of clothing that they wear once. Yeah. Like, why? Like, I don't understand why. Like, I, like you want a nice dress? Buy a nice dress you can keep forever. Like, I don't know. It's just like, it's, it's a, yeah. I just think that... Yeah, it's a can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That money could be spent, like, honestly, like, my old man spoke to me about it and he's like, what, is he, what do you call it when you get married overseas somewhere, a loop or some shit? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Steph, what is it called? What? When you get married overseas? It doesn't matter if it's... <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it an elope? Married without like, having a wedding ceremony. Yeah. It's like going... It's all eloping. It's eloping. Eloping. Yeah. Just going to Bali for a cheap wedding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I reckon, I reckon you know a couple of people that have done that. Oh, I definitely honestly, know I will. I think it's a fucking great idea. I know, I have friends who have done it and they've told me what they've paid and what they've got. One of my mates I work with, right? He, um... Yeah, so... He obviously paid for a package, got it all done. The videographer and the photographer for the wedding, right? He shot all day, and then he must have had people in the background like editing and like doing the photos and shit. Because yeah. when he got home, 
at like 11 o'clock at night on their TV in their fucking hotel room was everything. Really? I was like, dude, that is efficient. Man. Yeah. Like being someone <laughs> who does. How would you charge for that? That'd be like five oh, grand or something. It, like it that? wasn't even for, like for me personally. When he told me the number and what he got, I was still like, dude, you got so lucky, man. That I don't is, know anyone that would do that, especially that is, in Australia. Yeah, dude. No way. No <laughs> fucking way. No fucking way. All right. Anyway, uh, we'll wrap this up. Uh, you know, we, I do like to talk about two different topics. I have no fuck all about Game of Thrones, but it seems to be oh, a massive thing at the game. moment. <laughs> massive thing at the moment. You're a bit of a bit of a Game of uh, Thrones oh, fan. I, I dabble. You dabble. <laughs> so what's what's the crack? What's happened in this last episode that everyone's crying? Oh about? man, it's hard to talk about if the host hasn't even seen it. No, nah, but... trust me, I, I've seen the memes. Yeah, there's a lot of memes at the moment about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So pretty um, much they've had what, six seasons. Yes, no, this is the eighth, they just finished the eighth eight, season. Eight, eight seasons, seasons yeah, and over, they threw like, all this money at it, and the last season's made a crock of shit, hey? Yeah, pretty much, so every episode's been like 10 million or something like that. Are they you fucking kidding me? Spend, like, yeah, it's, yeah, and it's like, they've yeah. just like rushed the whole last season, everyone's like really pissed off. You know what the worst part is, they're still going to make so much money. Oh yeah, they're going to make spin-offs and everything like that, like, yeah. pretty much, just like all like... So the episode, the episode, spoilers, whatever, so <laughs> what the episode that just fit, the, like the last episode, what was so bad about it? Um... I don't know, I feel, I was like, I didn't mind it, whatever, like, I didn't mind it too bad, but it was like, looking on Facebook, like, everyone was just picking at it so much. Yeah. It was just like, one of the characters, Bran, who was like, the three-eyed raven, who like, he pretty much like, had no personality whatsoever, just because he could see the past, present, and future, so he knew what was going to happen the whole time. Yeah. Like, he like, said like, early in the season, that like, he was going to be, he'd be, they, they make him king. Yeah. And like, he said like, early in the episodes and stuff like that, that he'd make a terrible king, and like, he pretty much just like, overrides that and he's like I'm, I want to be king and stuff like that so like they yeah. just so like they just rush the whole was thing was it like a cheap cop out yeah. yeah it was like so it's like it's like it's like when you're like a kid and you're saying like you're writing an English essay and you don't know how to finish it then you go I woke up oh yeah, it was all a dream yeah, yeah. I've yeah. done that before <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? So that's what it was like. Yeah, pretty episode. much. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like the the writers like got a um, gig writing for the new Star Wars flick, so they just want to finish Game of Thrones straight away and start start their new job just because it involves more money. Honestly, how is there it's another a- Star Wars? fucking movie coming oh, out. Oh, dude, Disney bought it. They're going to pump oh, it out until, like, they've fuck, sucked dude. every last bit of dude, money I remember out watching it. it as a kid with my old man. <laughs> we're going being like, whoa, dude, this is yeah, ridiculous. Like watching on VCR. Yeah, and, and, like and, like, and now, like, I wa- I, I've, I've watched the newest ones, and I'm just like, fuck, I'm just like, yep. man, how many more fucking Jedis can you bring in? Oh, and then the fucking force. Suck and the and money out of it until it's dead. Yeah, yeah. That's the world we live in, eh? Hey? That's the world we live in. Anyway, <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thank you for coming on to the show. No I know worries. it's a pretty big drive, even though I picked you up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got no shoes either, so thanks, cheers. Yeah, right, no worries, man. Uh, we'll uh, catch you on the next one. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, uh, make sure to share it with your friends, especially if you have uh, younger siblings who are currently in that HSC phase of their life and they're, I don't know if they're an apprenticeship or not, even if you're not in that period of your life and you just want to... Um, you know, go see the world. Fuck, fuck what the world says you're meant to do. Fuck your job. If your girlfriend's a piece, if your girlfriend annoys you, mate, fucking see you later. <laughs> come join the. Come, <laughs> just come fucking enjoy the world. Uh, but anyway, I'll see you next episode, guys. Bye.